Assalamualaikum and very good day. You are still with me, Razia Adam, for JKE 316E, Quantitative Economics. What we'll be discussing today is part four uh, under the syllabus of Quantitative Economics. Okay, we'll be covering the topic of correlation as well as regressions. It's uh, related, but it's not that uh, it's not similar. The main reference and the resources that I'll be using is based on the text by Keller, okay, uh, 2012. Managerial Statistics, the ninth edition, produced by Southwestern Sengage Learning. While the slide is actually from Keller 2009, okay, the eighth edition. Copyright of the slide, okay, belongs to Sengage Learning. While there are some other uh, resources that I put, uh, I use, okay, uh, the the sources for the slide is uh, available on the slide itself. Before we go further with the topic of correlation and regression, let's look, uh, let's discuss the example shown on screen. I'm sure as a student of economics, you already come across the theory of demand with downward sloping line and theory of supply with upward sloping line, consumption theory in macroeconomics where you have an upward sloping line. Okay, so something similar is being shown on screen. Okay, let's ignore the line for the time being. Okay, just focus your attention to the, uh, dot, the, the red dots. Okay, so if you look at the one on the left hand side of the screen so you have on the uh, horiz uh, horizontal axis foreclosures and then on the vertical axis the household units okay when you have the dotted rates uh, the dot rates okay close together and it looks like they are moving upwards okay remember in mathematics you always read from the origin okay the origin is the left uh, corner okay down at the bottom so when you read from the left to right, okay, you see that the red dots, okay, they are moving together, okay, upwards, okay, from left to right. So you can say that, okay, there are correlation between foreclosures and household unit. The same thing, the one in the middle, so you have on the horizontal axis unemployment rate, while on the uh, vertical axis percentage of college educated. So in this case, okay, what we have here, a negative relationship between unemployment rate and college education because okay your red dots are moving together downwards from left to right okay when we discuss from the origin okay while on the other hand if you look at the uh, the right hand side of the slide you have the percentage of college education okay and then uh, the pet owners the number of pet owners on the vertical axis and you have the red dots scattered everywhere Okay, when the red dots are scattered all over the, your graph, it shows that there is no relationship. Okay, so in this case, logic tells you, okay, of course, is there any relationship between the number of pet owners and the percentage of people having college education? Of course not, isn't it? Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you are college educated or you are not college educated. This is the United States. Basically, we are talking about having a degree or not having a degree, okay, in our local terms. Okay, and whether you are also having pets at home or you do not have pets at home. Okay, basically it's two different things. So no correlation between college educated and pet owners. On the other hand, okay, if you look at unemployment rates and uh, college education, of course they are related. If you, if you are college educated or if you have a degree, chances are you will be employed. So in this case, the more uh, percentage of being college educated, the lower is unemployment rate. So that's why you have a negative correlation, okay, or negative relationship between college education and the unemployment rate, okay? So basically, what does this graph tell you? The red dots is basically the correlations, okay? Correlation analysis, you can switch, okay, between your unemployment rate, okay, on the horizontal axis, it can be the vertical axis but you still get the negative relationships okay so correlation analysis depicts the test uh, or test the strength or relationship between two variable okay whether it's, it gives you the direction whether it's positive or it's negative whether it's a weak relationship or it's strong negative relationships or it's just no relationship okay what about regressions for regression okay the word regress Okay, uh, if you remember the word progress is moving forward, so regress is the other way around. Okay, so we regress. So in this case, okay, based on the red dots, okay, you know that, okay, so there is a, in this case, the one in the middle, 
there is strong negative relationship between college education, having a degree or not having a degree, and the unemployment rate of a country. So because of that, you want to regress because you want to estimate exactly how many percent of college education and how many percent of unemployment rate. Okay, so regression analysis, okay, will be uh, demonstrating to you the degree to which one or more variable will promote or positive or negative change in the other variable. You can as actually put a figure, okay, so that later on you can make an estimation. Okay, if you increase the number of people in Malaysia having uh, a degree by 2020, for example, uh, if you remember, okay, in Malaysia we have brain, my brain PhD, okay, my brain masters, all of that. So you can predict, okay, if we increase the number of people having college education or having a degree, first degree, second degree, okay, we will see that you can estimate or you can forecast that by year 2020, for example, unemployment rate of Malaysia will be reducing by this much or this much, okay. So today, the objective of the topic that we're discussing, okay, regression and correlation is simply to discuss uh, the, uh, from chapter 16, simple linear regression only, as well as correlation, while chapter 17 will be uh, covered just a little bit on multiple regressions. Okay, before we go further with the topics of correlation and regressions, okay, this is from chapter 16 and chapter uh, 17, Okay, let's look at the overview of the whole chapters. Okay, so basically what we are doing now, okay, we are looking at the relationship between two variables, the minimum of two variables. We are not, uh, we are no longer talking about one variable, now we are moving into two variables. Okay, so the relationship between two variables can be explained in terms of correlation. Okay, so correlation, okay, uh, basically you can show this by the uh, drawing your scattered diagram, the red dots just now without the line is basically what is known as scattered diagrams. Okay, or you can explain variable relationship in terms of simple regressions. Okay, simple regression is the line. Okay, the line that tells you there is a positive uh, relationship between the variable is going up. If your line of regression is going down, it tells you there is a negative relationship between the two variables. So when we discuss simple regressions, okay, what you need to do is first you need to estimate your uh, estimation uh, equations, which is y equals to a plus bx. Okay, we'll look into this in details. Okay, and number two, you're going to discuss the model or the equations goodness of fit. Goodness of fit will be in terms of coefficient of determinations, your r square. Or it can be in terms of uh, sum of square error or ANOVA, which will be discussed in another topic in the next part of the series. Okay, in part three, you still come across hypothesis testing instead of uh, different formula for step three. So basically, okay, you will be testing for the coefficient values. Okay, and then part four, okay, uh, based on the model that you estimate in part one, okay, estimation of the equations, you can make a prediction, you can make a forecast, okay? And then in part C, okay, basically if you understand about simple regression, relationship between two variables, Y and X, then you can go to multiple regression where instead of only one X, now you have X1, X2, X3, and so on and so forth. Let's look at the first one, okay, where we discuss simple regression. Okay, when we discuss simple regression, our objective is to analyze the relationship between two interval variables. Okay, so what's the use of simple regression? Okay, it's basically used to predict the value of one variable. Okay, this variable is usually known as the dependent variables or your, your, your effect. Okay, and on the basis of the other variable, your independent variable or your cost. Okay, so your y is your dependent variable, the, the effect, while your x is your independent variable, that is your cost. Okay, when we discuss correlation in part b, by definitions, okay, our objective is only to determine whether a relationship between x and y exists. Okay, correlation just tells you whether uh, x and y, okay, has a relationship. Okay, and here this is where you need to come across models. 
Okay, models is mathematical equations to describe these relationships. Okay, models can be deterministic and it can be probabilistic. Okay, before we can go further, okay, I need to uh, to explain to you about the different model type. Okay, just now, okay, you already come across the word deterministic models and probabilistic model. What are they? Okay, as for deterministic model, this is an equation that is fully determined the value of the dependent variable from the value of the independent variable. While the probabilistic model is a method used to capture the randomness that is part of real life process. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you the example later. So basically, when we talk about deterministic models, okay, basically this one is just an approximation of the relationship between the variables. You need to plus a random term which measure the error of the deterministic component. So what you have at the end is what we call as the probabilistic model. Okay, a simple example that comes to mind, let's talk about the theory of uh, saving in economics. Okay. So in economics, uh, saving is made up uh, or saving is a function of income. So saving S, okay, as a function equals to uh, income Y. So that is basically an approximation of the relationship. If we, you were to model this uh, uh, saving theory, you need to remember that there are other variables other than income that also determine your saving levels. Okay, so in that case, you need to add a random term, okay, into your model so that you have a better probabilistic model. Okay, let's look at the definition of a model. Okay, examples here, okay, uh, do all houses of the same size measured in square feet sell for exactly the same price? So this is a question asking you whether houses of the same size, do they sell for the same price? Okay, for a deterministic model, okay, the cost of building a new house is about $100 uh, per square foot. And most lots sell for about $100. So, the approximate selling price, selling price is variable Y, would be Y equals to $100,000, okay, the, the, the cost of buildings. Okay, and then the most lot we sell for $100,000 per square foot. Foot, okay, multiply with the uh, square footage, okay, x, where x is the size of the house in square feet. Uh, we are still continuing discussing uh, the model just now. So a model of the relationship between house size, okay, this is the independent variable, and the house price, which is the dependent variable that we are interested in, would be. So if we look at the graph there, house size is the uh, independent variable on the uh, x axis while the house price the dependent variable is the vertical axis or the y axis so in this case okay you start with um, uh, most lots okay the land where you build your house okay let's say in this case it sells for hundred thousand dollar while the cost of building the house okay is hundred dollar per square foot so hundred thousand uh, dollar the cost of the land plus hundred uh, dollar per square foot multiply with the size okay the cost of building the house so in this model the price of the house is completely determined by the size of the house there's no other variables okay uh, so you can say that the, the price of the house is the same just uh, the size is different then only the price is different we are still discussing about the model just now in reality however the house cost will vary even among the same size of house. Okay, so you, you see on the graph, okay, there are different dots in blue. It shows that the different type of uh, house, maybe with the same size, okay, for example, the one on the left hand side, you have the blue dots in one straight line vertical. So it shows that the house is of the same size, but the price is different. So you have the one a bit lower, the one a bit uh, higher. Same thing the one in the middle, a different size of house, okay, but there are five dots, that means five different units actually, but they are of different size. And then same thing the one on the right hand side of the screen, okay, you have many blue dots there, okay, on the same vertical line, so, okay, almost. So it shows that they are more or less of the same size, but different prices, okay. So you see that there are higher and lower variability, okay. So in this case, Okay, you can see that in actual, uh, in actual life or in reality, the price of the house 
okay, with the same size, okay, they will be different. There are other factors that influence the price of the house, okay. For example, the deco options, okay, maybe the cabinet upgrades, okay, maybe the lot locations, okay. If we are talking about the price of housing in Penang, okay, the location, the same size, uh, the same lot, okay, the same size of the lot in Penang, okay, the main island and the one on the peninsula, okay, it's brown price. There will be a lot different because the lot, uh, because of the price difference. Okay, so because of that, okay, your deterministic model needs some adjustment. So instead of house price is uh, equals to hundred thousand, the cost of the land plus hundred hundred, uh, the cost of building, okay, multiply with the size. Now you need to add another part into the model, which is uh, which is called as the error term or the symbol e, like e there, but it's actually what we call as epsilon in Greek, okay. Such that what you have now is no longer a deterministic model, but what you have now is a, a probabilistic model. Okay, with the addition of an error term into your deterministic models. Okay, when you add the random term or the error term just now, okay, so instead of deterministic model, so what you have now is a probabilistic model. So in this case, the price of a house, okay, is a function of its size, it's still the same. But now you have an error term, okay, so the Greek letter epsilon, so it represents the random term or the error variable. There are other things that is not included in the equation, okay. So uh, the epsilon or the error term is the difference between the actual selling price and the estimated price which is based on the size of the house. So it value, okay, will vary from house sales to house sales, even if the square footage, that is the X, remains the same. So in this case, the addition of error term will be able to explain why you have the different blue dots, okay, for the same size but different price. So now we have come across to the simple linear regression model. What is it? Okay, it's simply a straight line model with one independent variable. Okay, so that's why we call it linear because it's a straight line. Okay, uh, for the purpose of our syllabus, we just consider a linear regression. We won't be doing all this non-linear regression because that is an advanced topic. Okay, uh, simple linear because we are talking about one independent variable only, only one x. Okay, so simple linear regression model is written as y. Okay, remember y is your dependent variables. Okay, this is your vertical axis. Okay, y is made up of beta, beta 0 or this is your intercept. Okay, plus beta 1, this is the slope of the line. Okay, and x is your independent variable plus the error term or the error variable epsilon. When we discuss simple linear regression model, okay, you need to take note that both beta 0 and beta 1 are population parameter, okay, which are usually unknown and hence estimated from the data. Okay, uh, if you look at the graph, okay, this is something like the uh, consumption theory. Okay, in macroeconomic, we have consumption theory. So basically, uh, consumption, your uh, dependent variable on the vertical axis y, while x is your income, okay, independent variable on the horizontal axis. So the idea of consumption theory is that the higher your income, okay, the higher that you can consume. But, okay, if you look at zero income, okay, as a normal rational econ uh, uh, economic person, okay, even if you have zero income, let's say you are a student, you, you have no income, you just depend on scholarship or you just depend from your uh, money from your parents or from your anywhere else, okay? So because of that, with zero income, people still consume. So that is actually the point, okay, beta, zero, or the y-intercept, okay? While the slope of the line is, okay, is given as beta one. So this is the marginal uh, consumption part, MPC, marginal rate of consumptions, okay? That is one example from the economics theory. Okay, so instead of estimating beta 1 and beta uh, 0, okay, what we'll be doing is estimate the co coefficient in terms of B, uh, B0 and B1, okay? So similar to estimation of mu based on X, okay, we estimate beta 0 using B0 and beta 1 using B1. So this is the standard notation. 
Okay, the y intercepts and the slope respectively of the least square or the regression line. Okay, so y with a hat, that means the estimated uh, y is given as beta 0, uh, not beta 0, b0, which is uh, the value for, estimated value for beta 0, and b1, the estimated value for uh, beta 1. So remember, this is an application of the least square method, or the ordinary least square, OLS, is very famous. Okay, and it produces a straight line that minimizes the sum of the square difference between the point and the line. Okay, so that is the definition of ordinary least square, or OLS. Okay, let's look at example 16.1. Okay, in this example, the annual bonuses, okay, it's time of the year now in December, okay, where people count their bonus, okay, for the, uh, especially uh, before Christmas, okay, before New Year. Okay, so the annual bonuses in $1,000 of six employees with different years of experience were recorded as follows. We wish to determine, okay, the relationship between annual bonus and years of experience. Okay, before we can actually go further, okay, you need to determine uh, first hand which, is, uh, which one is X, which one is Y. Okay, in this case, we are talking about two variables. We are talking about the amount of annual bonus that you get and the year of experience, your working experience. Okay, which one costs the other? So, you need to, uh, wait, either you go back to theory, if we are talking about economics theory, or here we are talking about the uh, the reality, so we know that the longer that you work, okay, the more experience you are, then the more bonus that you get, okay. So basically, your bonus will depend on year of experience or your working experience. So in this case, your experience is your independent variable, the cost, while the effect is your dependent variable, annual bonus, y. So you have the first worker, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the, uh, in terms of, uh, not the first worker, that is the year of experience. And then you have the different bonuses, okay, in terms of 6, 1, 9, 5, 17, and 12, okay, the, in terms of $1,000. If you were to plot, okay, the data that is available, okay, uh, for download from the textbook online, okay, you will see this straight line, okay, it's a regression line, okay, while the blue dot is the actual data, the, uh, or the actual observation just now. So you have the one year experience getting 6,000, okay, and then you have those with two year experience somehow getting less, but those with three year are getting more, more than 8,000 and so on and so forth until the last one with six years of experience. So basically, what does it tell you? There is a positive correlation, okay? In terms of correlation, there's positive correlation between the working experience and the amount of bonus. So regression line, okay, it's just a line that minimizes the sum of the square difference between the points and the line, or simply known as the line of best fit. What are, the red line is the best line that uh, can describe your blue dots, okay? You cannot draw any other red line that best explain your blue dots. Okay, let's move on to a second example, okay? Example 16.2. So in this case, we have uh, car dealers across North America which use the red books to help them determine the value of used car that their customers trade in when purchasing new cars. Okay, this is an example for United States. The books, which is published monthly, list the trade-in value for all basic models of cars. It provides alternative values for each car model according to its condition and optional features. The value are determined on the basis of the average paid at recent used car auctions and the source of supply for many used car dealers. Okay, I know it's uh, worthy, but okay, this is the explanation before we can actually look at the data. Still on example 16.2, okay. However, the red books just now does not indicate the value determined by the odometer reading. Okay, despite the fact that a critical, a critical factor for a used car buyers is how far the car has been driven. So to examine this issue, a used car dealer randomly selected 103 year old Toyota Camrys that were sold at an auction during the past month. Okay, the dealer recorded the price in thousand US dollar and the number of miles, okay, thousand on the odometer. Okay, so the dealer wants to find the regression lines. 
This is still for example 16.2. Uh, this is uh, for you in case you want to do the uh, the calculation using computers. Okay, just click okay regressions. Okay, and you click in your data range. Okay, for y and we are for x. And click OK and you get your regression uh, tables. Okay, we are still discussing example 6.2. This is the summary of output if you are using the computers. Okay, to do your regressions. So in this case, okay, the summary of output. So you have uh, most uh, importantly the coefficients. Coefficients for the intercept is given as 17.25, the one that I highlight in red circle. Okay, and then for the odometer readings, okay, the coefficient is negative 0 0.0669. Okay, so based on this uh, result from the tables, you can put it in your uh, equations. So estimated y is equals to b0 plus b1x. Okay, so remember, okay, in this case, uh, x is the odometer reading. So what is the intercept? Uh, b0 is 17.25. And then what is the in coefficient for odometer? It's negative 0 0.0669. And then multiply with x. So this is the regression equations, okay, or regression line for the uh, odometer readings for the uh, used car dealer. Okay, now we are looking at the part where we need to interpret your regression equation uh, that you already calculated using the software. Okay, as you might expect with a used car, the slope coefficient, the B1, okay, which equals to negative 0 0.0669, okay, it means that for each additional mile on the odometer, that will decrease the price by 0 0.0669, okay, dollar, or in term of cent is 6.69 cent. That means one additional unit increase in the odometer reading will reduce the price by 0 0.0669 unit. In this case, because the unit is given in term of thousand US dollar, okay, so you need to convert the decimal places so in term of cents, okay, is 6.69 cent. While the intercept B0 is equal to 17,250. Okay, uh, in US dollar or in terms of 17.25 if you take out the dollar sign. So the interpretation would be that when X is zero, okay, uh, when we talk about used car, okay, even if the odometer reading is zero, the selling price is 17,250. Okay, it's already reduced in value. Okay, however, we have no data for car with less than 19,100 miles on them. So this is, isn't a correct assessment. Okay, so it's not important, okay, in terms of interpretation of the intercept. What is more important is the interpretation of the slope coefficient, your B1. So remember, one additional unit or one additional additional changes in X will affect Y by how much. Okay, that's the most important things or the uh, points that you need to take up from these slides. We are still discussing example 16.2. By selecting the line feed plot on the regression dialog box, this will produce a scattered plot of the data and the regression line. So in this case, because your slope coefficient is negative, okay, so your line of best fit, the one in red, okay, the one in red is downward sloping. Okay, so remember if we, if you were to draw graph, okay, or uh, in this case you need to determine which one is x, which one is y. So, of course, your X is odometer reading. It should be on the horizontal axis. While your Y, your dependent variable, is the, the value of the second uh, used car is on the uh, Y axis or the vertical axis. Okay, so you can draw your, the blue dots is your actual observations. While the red line, the regression line, is downward sloping because it's negative. Okay, what are the required conditions, okay, for regression? Okay, for this regression methods to be valid, the following four conditions for the error variable, the epsilon, must be met. Number one, okay, the probability distribution of epsilon is normal. I told you before, okay, the assumption of normal distribution is very important. Okay, the second assumption is that the mean of the distribution is zero. That means the expected value of epsilon is zero. And the third point is that the standard deviation of epsilon is sigma epsilon, which is a constant regardless of the value of x. While the value of epsilon, okay, the error term associated with any particular value of y 
is independent of epsilon that is associated with any other value of y. So this is the required conditions when we do regression. Okay, now we are going to assess the models. Okay, the least square method will always produce a straight line even if there is no relationship between the variables or if the relationship is something other than, uh, other than linear. Okay, because by right, you already assume that it's a linear. So if the actual case, okay, the variable is, is not in terms of linear relationship, but somehow because you use, okay, regression, simple regression, so it's going to be a linear line. Okay, so hence, in addition to determining the coefficient of the least square line, we need to assess, okay, your regression model to see how well it fits the data. Okay, we'll see this evaluation methods now. Okay, it's based on the sum of squares for error. Okay, in short, the SSE. Uh, you will be using a lot of the sum of square for error SSE when we discuss the next topic, which is ANOVA. Okay, but for now, okay, the sum of square for error is calculated as SSE equals to the summation of YI minus YI hat. Okay, yi is the observations, okay? So in this case, if you have six car, okay? So you start with the first car, yi the first one, okay, the second one, and until the sixth one. And then yi hat is the one that you estimated, okay? And then you, you square the different and you add up. So your variance, okay, or your standard deviation, okay, for the epsilon, s epsilon is taken as the square root of SSE, okay? Uh, divided by n minus 2. So n minus 2 is always the degree of freedom, the denumerator. And the sum of square for error, SSE, is used in the calculation of the standard error of the estimate. Okay? So in this case, if the S for the epsilon is 0, okay, all the points will fall on the regression line. That means no variance. If variance is 0, what you have is all your dots will fall exactly on the regression line, perfect regression line. When we want to uh, discuss the fit of the model, so we'll be looking at the standard error of the estimate. Okay, so standard error of the estimate, you need to look at the, uh, the value of standard error. So in this case, the one that I highlighted in blue box, okay, the line in blue, Okay, standard error of the estimate S epsilon is given as 0 0.3265. So it means that if standard error estimate is small, okay, S epsilon is small, the fit is excellent. And the linear model should be used for forecasting. If the standard error of the estimate is large, the model is poor. So in this case, you need to determine, okay, whether 0 0.3265 just now, is it small or is it large? How, how small is small, how large is large. We are still discussing the standard error of the estimate. So to judge the value of the standard error of the estimate, S epsilon, okay, we need to compare it to the sample mean of the dependent variable, okay, the y hat. Okay? So in this example, standard error of the estimate is given as 0.3265, while y hat is given as 14.841. So, relatively speaking, it appears to be small, okay, uh, the standard error of this estimate or S epsilon, okay, 0.3 is uh, relatively smaller than y, y bar, not Y hat, okay, Y bar of 14.8. So, hence, our linear regression model of car price, okay, the second used car price, okay, as a function of odometer reading is good. Other than testing the fit of the model, okay, uh, in terms of standard error of the estimate, you can also test, okay, the slope of your models, okay. If no relationship, okay, no linear relationship exists between the two variables, we would expect the regression line to be horizontal. That means a slope of zero, okay. So we want to see if there is a linear relationship, whether the slope is something other than zero. If it's positive, okay, you have an outward sloping slope, okay, uh, then it's, uh, it's different from zero. Or it's less than zero, it can be negative, so it's a negative relationship. So in this case, our research hypothesis becomes your H1, beta 1, okay, does not equal to zero, while your null hypothesis, your H0, beta 1 equals to zero. So this is uh, hypothesis testing for the slope of a regression line.
Okay, when we discuss, okay, testing the slope or regression line, okay, still using the fast step or hypothesis testing. So just now we have your hash, uh, your hash naught, okay, beta, beta 1 equals to 0, and your beta 1, okay, your affinity hypothesis can be greater than or less than or does not equal to 0, okay. So we can implement this test statistic to try our hypothesis. Okay, so it's uh, similar to the test statistic for the z-score formula or the t-test last time, except that now we are talking in terms of b and beta. Okay, so in this case, our test statistic in step 3, okay, is given as t equals to b1, okay, the sample that you calculate uh, from the regression line, okay, minus beta 1, okay, divided by the standard error of the estimates, in this case, standard error for beta 1. Okay, where uh, SB1 is the standard duration of B1 defined as uh, the standard error of the estimate S epsilon divided by square root of N minus 1 multiplied with S uh, X squared. If the error variable, if uh, that means the epsilon, the error term, okay, is normally distributed, the test statistic will have a student T distribution with N minus 2 degree of freedom. The rejection region will depend on whether or not we are doing a one tail or two tail test, okay? So if the question is asking for greater than, it's one tail test, uh, less than, okay, it's also one tail test. If the question is asking, okay, does not equals to zero, it's different from zero, okay, it's a two tail test, which is more typical. So let's look at example 6.4 in detail, okay, for hypothesis testing. So we want to determine whether there is a linear relationship between the price of the used car and its odometer reading, okay, in this case at 5% level of significance. Okay, so your hash naught is B1 equals to 0, and then your B uh, your authentic hypothesis, okay, your B1 does not equal to 0. Okay, it means that if the null hypothesis is true, there is no linear relationship. So in, th uh, in this case, the rejection region is given as, okay, using the T table, Okay, 5% divided by 2, degree of freedom, N minus 2. Okay, so in this case, 5% divided by 2, one tail area is 0 0.025. Your sample size is 100, minus 2 is 98. So you need to read the value from the T uh, table. So you get it's negative 1.984. Or it, it can be uh, because it's two tail tasks, or it can be positive 1.984. If you have your data, okay, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, using computer, okay, so everything will be computed, uh, okay, using the software, or you can compute manually, okay, but this is what you get from the computer. So the T uh, statistic, okay, for odometer, okay, the, the uh, uh, not the intercept, but for the coefficient of the uh, odometer reading, so you have the T statistic negative 13.44. Okay, so compare this test statistic value, negative 13.44, with the critical value that you already determined in step 2 just now, which is uh, negative 1.84. Okay, so you say that the test statistic for the odometer, the slope, or the uh, B1 is negative 13.49. This is greater than, okay, negative 1.984, critical value, and probability is 0 0.000. Okay, so because of that, you can make a decision. You do not reject, okay, uh, hash naught. Uh, okay, so there is an overwhelming evidence to infer that a linear relationship, um, sorry, you, okay, because ne negative 13.49 is greater than negative 1.89. Or in this case, you can simply ignore the negative. 13.49 is greater than 1.98. So because of that, you reject hash naught. When you reject hash naught, okay, you can make a conclusion that there is overwhelming evidence to infer that a linear relationship between odometer reading and the price of used car. Okay. Uh, another way of testing the slope is possible to test for positive or negative linear relationship. So this is a one tail test. So if that is the case, then our research hypothesis, your hash one, Okay, will be beta 1, less than 0. This is the case of testing for negative slope. Or uh, H1, okay, beta 1, greater than 0. This is the case of testing for a positive slope. In both cases, 
the null hypothesis, your hash null is always beta 1 equals to 0. Make sure you remember your hash null is always statement of equality. Another part of regression analysis is where we need to look at the coefficient of determinations. Okay, the test that we did so far has shown that if a linear relationship exists, okay, uh, so here is also useful for us to measure the strength of the relationship. Okay, so just now hypothesis testing, okay, uh, on the slope of the coefficient, okay, it's just that you have a relationship between the two variables. Okay, now we need to measure, okay, the strength of the relationship between the two variables. How do we do this? Okay, we can do this by calculating the coefficient of determination. So in short, we use the symbol capital R square. Okay, so capital R square is made up of S for XY square divided by SX square multiplied with XY square. Or it's simply, okay, R square is made up of 1 minus SSE, sum of square error, okay, uh, that I already introduced just now, divided by this uh, summation of all observation minus the y bar, okay, in bracket square. Okay, so the coefficient of determination is the square of the coefficient of correlation. So hence, r square is actually small r square. Okay, small r is correlation. Okay, so capital R square is coefficient of determination. I hope you do not get confused between the two, uh, capital R and small r. Ah. Okay, we're still discussing coefficient of determinations. Okay, similar with what we are going to discuss in the next topic, analysis of variance or ANOVA. Okay, we can partition the variation in Y into two parts. Okay, variation in Y can be due to the sum of square error or su uh, summation of uh, variation of Y can be due to the sum of square of regression, SSR. Okay, so uh, I... Uh, if you look at the slide, SSE is uh, stand for sum of square error. What is it actually? It just measure the amount of variation in Y that remain unexplained, okay, which is due to error. While SSR is the sum of square regression, which measure the amount of variation in Y, which is explained by variation in the independent variable X. Okay, let's look at the computation of the coefficient of determinations, R square, capital R square. Okay, the formula is given, okay, uh, SX, uh, XY square divided by SX square multiplied with XY square. Okay, what is sum of square uh, error? Okay, it's, uh, the formula is also given, okay, on screen. Okay, but if you use the computer, okay, the output, we simply came out R square, okay, uh, equals to 0 0.6. 483. So you can do the manual calculation. It's a bit tedious, but it's doable. Or you can pl uh, plug in your data into the computer. Okay, click the regression function. Okay, and then you have the summary of output came out. Okay, your regression statistic, and you read your R square value of 0 0.648. Um, I'm not concerned about uh, uh, just the calculation of uh, R square, I'm more concerned about the interpretation of R square. So in this case, how do we interpret coefficient of determinations? Okay, what does R square equals to 0 0.6483 means? Okay, so R square equals to 0 0.6483 means that 64.83% of the variation in the option selling price, Y, is explained by the variation in the odometer reading. So the rest, okay, remember we have 100%, so 100% minus 64.83%, so we have the balance, the remaining 35.17%, this is unexplained. So this is due to error, this is due to other variable that you don't count for in your model. So in this case, is it good? Okay, you have an R square of 64.83%, so the, the clue is that the, in general, the higher the value of R square, the better that your model fit your data. The closer to 100, okay, if possible you get 90, okay, it's uh, difficult to get more than 95, but the higher the value of R square, the better is the fit of your model. So if R square equals to 1, okay, what does it tell you? Okay, this is like a perfect match between the, the X and Y, okay, what you have is 
all your dotted points okay uh, fall exactly on your regression line if you have r squared equals to zero this is where something like the correlation graph just now okay your dotted observation point are scattered all over the graph okay you cannot draw a line okay so in other words there is no linear relationship between x and y okay here now i'm going to discuss a little bit of uh, the excel output i will discuss this further in the next part where we discuss anova in details okay but for now the analysis of variance anova table for the simple linear regression model can be given as below so you have the sources of the regression uh, the sources of the uh, error in terms of regression okay uh, in, uh, the sources of the variation in terms of uh, from the regression itself or from the error and then you have the total that is the the left hand side column okay and then you have the degree of freedom in this case because you have only one x so degree of freedom for the regression row is one okay for the error you have degree of freedom n minus two and the total for the degree of freedom is n minus one how do you get this because uh, you have uh, 1 plus n minus 2 so you have n minus 1 okay and then you have sum of square your SSE and your SSR okay if you add up okay uh, sum of square regression and sum of square error okay you add both parts okay that made up the total variation in y okay and then you have the next column mean square by definition whatever that you have okay in the sum of square column you divide with the degree of freedom column so in this case SSR sum of square for the regression divided by degree of freedom 1 that will give you mean square regression MSR and then you have a uh, sum of square for the error divided by the degree of freedom M minus 2 that will give you the MSE mean square of error okay and you take these two value MSR divided by MSE that will give you the F statistic okay so that is manual uh, calculation the formula how you get the F statistic but if you are using comp uh, computer the output will came out simply uh, in terms of ANOVA table so you have the degree of freedom okay just now our sample is 100 so you have regression degree of freedom 1 okay because only 1x okay and then residual okay degree of freedom is 98 because 100 minus 2 Okay, so the, the total is that 1 plus n minus 2, so you get n minus 1. So total degree of freedom is 99. And then you have sum of square uh, for the regression, 19.26. And then you have sum of square for the error, 10.45. Okay, for the mean square regression, how do you get 19.26? Okay, basically you take sum of square regression, 19.26 divided by 1. So you still get 19.26. And then what uh, for the mean square for the error, you take 10.45 divided by 98. So you get mean square for error uh, okay, of 0 0.11 or 0 0.11. So for the F statistic, 19.26 divided by 0 0.11. So you get 180.64. So if you are doing it from the computer, okay, you get the p-value is significant. Okay, significant of test 0.00. Okay, let's look at the coefficient of correlations. Uh, we can use the coefficient of correlation, which is introduced earlier, to test for a linear relationship between two variables. Okay, let's recall that the coefficient of correlation range is always between minus uh, 1 and positive 1. Okay, you cannot have coefficient of correlation value greater than 1 or uh, okay, less than negative 1. Okay, something is wrong with your calculation if you've got such data. Okay, so if r equals small r is equals to negative one, okay, this is perfect negative uh, association, or in this case, uh, if you have small r equals to positive one, this is perfect positive association. So what you have is all the observation point fall exactly on the regression line. Okay, uh, instead if you have r equals to zero, that means the, the correlation equals to zero. There is no linear pattern okay your observation point is scattered all over the graph we can also do a uh, hypothesis testing for coefficient of correlations so in this case okay the population co coefficient of correlation is denoted as rho okay it's not p 
Okay, but it's uh, something like uh, with a curve P. So we call that the degree symbol for rho. Okay, so we estimate its value from sample data with the sample coefficient of correlation. So R, small r, is equals to SXY divided by SX multiplied with SY. So the test statistic for testing if rho equals to zero, that means correlation equal to zero or no correlation. That is the null hypothesis. So the test statistic will be T equals to R multiplied with square root of degree of freedom N minus 2 divided by 1 minus R square. So degree of freedom V uh, or nu there is equals to N minus 2. This is also a student T distribution with degree of freedom N minus 2. Okay, this is example 16.6. Where we conduct the test that uh, the t test of the coefficient of correlation as an alternate alternate means to determine whether odometer reading, okay, and auction selling price are linearly related. So your research hypothesis, your H one, is rho does not equals to zero. If rho does not equal to zero, it means that there is a linear relationship. While the null hypothesis, your H naught, is rho equals to zero. So it means that there is no linear relationship. So the difference between the two statements, okay, rho equals to zero and rho does not equal to zero is just the word no. Okay, rho does not equal to zero, there is linear relationship. Rho equals to zero, there is no linear relationship. I, go, I hope you can clarify between the two uh, hypotheses. Okay, when it comes to computation, okay, uh, example 16.6, we already shown that SXY is equals to negative 2.909. Okay, how do you get this? Okay, it's uh, given there on screen. So, to calculate the coefficient of correlation, R equals to SXY divided by SX multiplied with XY. Okay, uh, you put in uh, all the values that you already calculate for SXY, SX as well as SY. So, you get small r equals to negative 0 0.8052. So in this case, you put this value of r into your test statistic. Okay, this is for the step 3 of the hypothesis testing. So you calculate, okay, you should be able to get the same answer. It's negative, uh, t equals to negative 13.44. Okay, this is computation of example 16.6 .6 using Excel at ins in the, uh, okay, using your computer. Okay, so the textbook, okay, advise you, okay, for you to download the data analysis plus, okay, once you download, okay, you add into your Excel, then only you can click, okay, the correlation steps as well as the regression steps, okay, so the correlation uh, time is Pearson correlation uh, coefficients, okay, so you can get this output, okay, the uh, correlation between price and odometer, the Pearson coefficient of correlation is given as 0. Uh, negative 0 0.8052 okay then you can compare okay the t statistic just now that you already calculated as negative 13.44 with the uh, critical two tail test why two tail because it's equals to zero does not equals to zero so it's a two tail so the value is 1.98 so negative uh, 13 is greater than uh, negative uh, or less than uh, 1.98 negative or in this case uh, 13 is uh, greater than 1.98 positive so in this case you reject the null hypothesis when you reject the null hypothesis it means that there is no linear correlation so this is in favor of the alternative hypothesis so you can say that the two variable the price of the second hand car and the odometer reading are in fact related in a linear fashion Okay, one use of the regression equation is for you to do, uh, to make further estimations. Okay, so in this case, okay, back to our example on the odometer reading as well as the value of the used car. So we could, we could use our regression equations. Okay, y hat. Y hat means that your estimated y is equal to 17.25 minus 0.0669x. Okay. So, so in this case, you can use it to predict the selling price of a car with 40,000 miles on it. How you do that? Okay, you simply plug in that 40,000 uh, miles, okay, in replacement of X. So in this case, 0 0.0669 multiplied with 40, okay, you ignore the unit for the time being. 
okay you deduct that from 17.25 so you should get your estimated y is 14.574 or if you bring in the thousand units so you get 14,574 dollar so we call this value as point prediction chances are though the actual selling price will be different so we can estimate the selling price in terms of interval okay now we're going to look at the procedure for a regression diagnostic okay so number one what you need to do is develop a model that has a theoretical basis there must be a logic okay why in this case uh, you 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 uh, regress for the price of the car dependent upon the odometer reading okay in economic theory consumption theory okay you regress okay consumption as a function of income okay not the other way around Okay, investment is a function of income. Okay, so it must have a theoretical basis. Okay, so you must know firsthand which one is X. Okay, your independent variable, which one is Y, your dependent variables. Okay, number two, you need to gather the data for the two variables in the models. Okay, number three, you can draw the scattered diagram to determine whether a linear models okay, appear to be appropriate. Okay, so this is where you need to identify possible outliers. Okay, this is observation that totally way different from the rest. Okay, you can take it out. Okay, scattered diagram tells you roughly whether you should get a negative coefficient. Okay, for B1 or you should get a positive coefficient. Whether it's a positive uh, line, okay, going up or it's negative downward sloping lines. Okay, so from step, uh, the next step, this is where you determine the regression equations. Okay, step five, this is where you calculate the residuals and you check the required conditions. And number six, you need to assess the model's fit in terms of the coefficient of determination, capital R square, as well as the SSE. Okay, and if the models fit the data, you can use the regression equations to predict a particular value or the dependent variable okay and it's estimate it means okay so that is the procedure for regression diagnostic for a particular models i'm a bit concerned okay uh, in case you have to do this calculation of uh, b1 and b0 in exam okay because it involves manual calculations so i put in a simpler formula for you such that you can do this in exam without cracking your heads okay so in this case, the formula for uh, B1, okay, the coefficient uh, of your line, okay, the, uh, your B1 is given as N, okay, summation of XY minus summation of X multiplied with summation of Y. So that is the numerator. And then you have N multiplied summation of X square minus with summation of X in bracket square as the denumerator. Okay, I hope you take note that Summation of x square is different from summation of x in bracket square. I'll tell you why later. Okay, so if you have the value for summation of x, y, what is summation of x, what is summation of y, what is summation x square, okay, you saw it in, okay, you saw the numerator over the denumerator, so you should get b1 equals 0 0.6. Okay, so that is the slope of the coefficient. Uh, the coefficient. Okay, in order for you to calculate the intercept value, your B0, so in this case, I use symbol A, but it's, uh, take note A, in this case, is basically your B0. Okay, your B0 or your intercept A is given as your Y bar minus uh, the coefficient of B1 just now, the slope coefficient of B1 just now, multiply with X bar. So in this case, if you have the Y bar equals to 2, okay, the slope coefficient just now 0.6, Okay, and then the x bar is 3, put it in, you solve, you get uh, the intercept value 0 0.2. So now, okay, when they ask for your regression equation, you can say that y equals to 0 0.2, the intercept, okay, plus 0 0.6x. So it tells you that this is a positive relationship between x and y. One additional unit increase in x will increase y by 0 0.2. Okay, so you must be careful when it comes to interpretation. Okay, 0.6x means that one additional increase in x will increase y by 0.6 units.
So if you were to draw the graph or sketch the graph just now, so in this case, your x is on the horizontal axis, your y is always on the uh, vertical axis. So intercept 0 0.2, cut, this is where your line cut across your y axis, while 0 0.6 is positive. So this is uh, to tell you that your line, your regression line should be outward sloping positive slopes. Okay, the slope is given as 0 0.3. Okay, uh, when it comes to hypothesis testing on the slope, okay, your hash naught is always beta does not equal to zero, beta beta one. Okay, alternatively, hash one, okay, beta one does not equal to zero. You want to test whether the slope is significant or not. Okay, if you are given that alpha level of significance of 0 0.05, degree of freedom is uh, n minus k plus one. So in this case, uh, you have k is the number of your x variable. There's only one x. Okay, k uh, uh, equals to 1 plus 1, so n minus 2. So you get degree of freedom. If you have uh, 5 observation point, 5 minus 2, you get 3 degree of freedom for new. So the critical value by looking at t-table is uh, equals to 3.182. It's a two-tail test. If you were to sketch okay, your t-distributions, Okay, so the critical value for you to uh, accept or reject will be uh, plus minus 3.182. Okay, uh, the, uh, with the area, okay, rejection area 0 0.025 on the right hand side and 0 0.025 on the left hand side of the screen. Okay, uh, what you see here is the manual steps, okay, with the actual data given on the uh, leftmost column, okay. So you have on the column, uh, on the left, x variables, okay, and y variable, the second column. So it's being paired, okay, when x is 5, y is 4. When x is 4, y is 3. When x is 3, y is 0. When x is 2, y is 1. And x is 1, y is 2. So that is the actual observation, okay, that is given. Okay, what you need to do, okay, is to calculate, uh, to, to fill, fulfill, uh, fill in these tables. So you have uh, X value and Y value. First, what you need to do is find the value X multiply with Y. So that's the third column from the left. Okay, 5 times 4, you get 20. 4 times 3, you get 12 and so on and so forth. Okay, the fourth column, you need to calculate X square. So x square in this case x5, okay, square 25, 4 square, okay, you get 16, and so on and so forth. Okay, y estimated, okay, based on what you have on top there. Okay, and you do the same for the other column. Okay, so y bar is simply add up all the y divided by 5. X bar is add up all the x divided by 5. So you get x bar equals to 3, y bar equals to 2. And your observation, okay, n is 5, okay, because you have 5 pair, okay, x and y, okay, so you have 5 compared, uh, pairing. Okay, another, uh, form, for another formula that you can use, you need to calculate all this value in the column. So you have the y hat, okay, you need to calculate y minus y hat, okay, and then you need to square it. So in this case, how you get uh, y hat 3.2? So that means you take your regression equation 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 multiply with uh, x equals to 5. So you get y hat 3.2. So in this case, uh, okay, you get y hat 3.2. So your y is 4, 4 minus 3.2. So you get the different y minus y hat is 0 0.8. Okay, so you take the square, 0 0.8, you take the square, so the next column, this is y minus y hat in bracket square, so you get the answer 0 0.64, and you do the rest of the row. Okay, same thing, okay, when you do for the x minus x bar square. So what is x? x is 5, so x bar is 3, 5 minus 3, uh, you get 2, 2 square, you get 4. Okay, the same, uh, the rest will follow. Same thing, y minus y bar, okay, so and then you take the square, that will give you, okay, when you add up, okay, at the end there, the, the final row, that is your estimate uh, error sums of square, and then you, you have the total sum of square. Okay, for the test statistic, is step 3 of hypothesis testing, okay, so in this case, uh, st uh, the test statistic T is uh, B, 
1 minus beta 1 okay divided by the standard error so in this case standard error for beta 1 and standard error for beta 1 is given as square root of ess just now divided by n minus 2 okay divided by uh, summation of x minus x bar okay x bar missing there uh, in bracket square okay hypothesis testing on the slope depend whether the question is asking for one tail test or two tail test okay if uh, the one okay beta equals to zero or beta does not equal to zero that is uh, two tail test if the test is testing for uh, beta one greater than zero one tail test on the right hand side or if beta one less than zero there is one tail test on the left hand side so depend with, uh, on what the question is asking you actually okay so your hash naught and hash one or your hash alternative can be either one of these three pair okay for the test statistic okay the t value just now you you slot in the value that you have okay from the tables okay you should be able to get your t equals to your estimated uh, b1 which is uh, okay the coefficient of your regression equation which is 0 0.6 Okay, uh, the variance for the beta 1 which is 0 0.46 Okay, it's already shown there how you get 0 0.46 So this is equals to T equals to 1.3 Okay, so for the uh, step 3 of the hypothesis testing T, okay, the test statistic value Okay, using T distributions Beta 1 divided by the uh, variance for beta 1 Okay, so you have the 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.46 This is equals to 1.3 30. So look at this case, okay, if you are testing for beta 1 does not equal to 0 in your alternative hypothesis H1, okay, given that the level of significance is 0 0.05, so the critical value is positive, uh, negative, uh, both positive and negative 3.182, and just now you already calculate your T value is positive 1.3, so this falls in your acceptance region, so, so you do not reject H0. So you are saying that beta 1 is equals to 0. Okay, we continue with the hypothesis testing. So the decision is that you cannot reject your hash naught because uh, your critical values just now, okay, uh, the test statistic is uh, in the acceptance region. Because you do not reject hash naught, you can make the conclusion that there is no evidence to indicate your x is uh, linearly related to your y. Okay, so in this case, PB is my X, okay, in the variable just now, while your y, my Y, okay, is the PA, okay, in this case, is the final exam at the 5% level of significance. The purpose of this manual step is just to show you that you have different formula in the textbook, you have uh, the, the software using computer that do can do all this, okay, for you, okay, but somehow when it comes to exam, you still have to calculate using a different formula which is simplified, supposedly to make your life easier, but okay, supposedly the answer should be more or less the same. Maybe the decimal place will be a bit different, but it should be more or less the same figure. You can try to slot in okay, whatever that we calculated just now in order to fill in our ANOVA table for the manual calculation uh, with the, uh, the value of X and Y given just now. So you have all the source of variation for the regression and for the error. You have the degree of the freedoms. Okay, you have the sum of square for regression and sum of square for error. And then you have the mean square for regression, mean square for error. And you have the F statistic equals to 1.69. Okay, based on what you already calculated from the table just now, let's say you are given, uh, uh, you are doing this uh, hypothesis testing for 5% uh, level of significance, alpha 0.05. Okay, F value, okay, the, uh, for the critical value for F, in this case, degree of freedom 1, okay, and 3, okay, you can read this from the F table, okay, not the T table, the F uh, critical value will be uh, 10.13, and your test statistic is 1 point, F statistic is 1.69, so in this case, definitely 1.69 is much less than 10.13 from the F table, okay, take note there, not the T table. So in this case, your decision is that you, uh, uh, you cannot reject your hash naught. So in this case, okay, your x cannot be used to predict your y because you cannot uh, reject your hash naught. Okay, basically we are done with simple regression model. 
okay where you uh, model y as a function of x but what if you have more than one independent variable so in this case you have x1 you have x2 you have x3 x4 and so on and so forth so let's look back at your uh, consumption function okay so instead of saying that consumption is a function of income okay it's also possible other variable for example we know that for example female shopper they tend to spend more okay so in this case you need to add the the gender of the uh gender of the person okay into the regression it's possible that uh, other uh, the level of education okay but level of education might related to income already so what about okay uh, the presence of a shopping complex if you have more shopping complex that tend to uh, re, uh, it make people uh, tend to consume more so in that case the number of shopping co uh, complex close by okay can also be put into the model as another independent variable so when you have many independent variable x1 x2 and so on and so forth so this is no longer simple regression model what you have now is a multiple regression model okay because why your dependent variable is made up of x1 is made up of x2 and made up of all the other x's but your model is case uh, need to be close with your error term the epsilon so in this case uh, beta beta 0 is always the intercept okay beta 1 is always the coefficient of the x1 beta 2 is coefficient of the x2 and so on and the rest so in this case okay uh, it tells you that uh, multiple regression is simply an extension of the simple regressions okay so in this case we have the uh, another model shown there but i won't go into it okay so enough for you to know multiple regression we just extend the simple regression by adding in more independent variable on the right hand side of the equation your error term is still there your dependent variable y is still there on the left hand side of the equation okay one thing i would like to highlight okay when you when it comes to doing the regression equations okay when you want to produce your model regression model you have to make sure what is x what is y okay i don't want you to get confused like you know between chicken and egg which one comes first okay so in this case uh in uh if you look at the cartoon of these two penguin okay so they're wondering okay do you think that all this film crew brought on the global warmings okay the, the film crew come to arctic okay because they are using their electrical equipment that bring the heat on so that bring the global warming that's one explanation so is it possible that the, uh, the film crew okay come to our tip because the global warming attract them so in this case you need to go back to theory okay that's the first part of the regression diagnostic okay what does the theory say okay so remember when you are doing your, your hypothesis test you always start with the basis what you are testing so in this case what you whatever you are testing is always start with the theory and here is another cartoon okay to highlight with you the difference between correlation and regressions okay correlation does not imply causations okay correlation it just show x and y okay is correlated okay you can switch okay uh, x in front y at the back y in front y, x at the back okay it just tells that, that uh, okay both of them are correlated while when we discuss regression okay x is causing y okay so you must be careful when you do regression you must know the theory okay x must be a variable that determine or x is a variable that is causing y so regression the line of causality run from your independent variable x to your dependent variable y while correlation does not uh, say anything about causation at all okay so that's the thing that you need to pay attention so it looks like they are related but most of the time they are not so you might calculate a correlation value that implies you know very hard correlation but you need to check in the first place okay uh, logically whether x is causing y here i would like to share with you one website where they are doing this statistical sim simulation for correlation and regression you can go to this website okay i'm not sure whether you have to pay for this but it shows to you okay the difference between okay correlations and regression okay and it 
uh, to illustrate these two concepts clearly. Okay, basically we are done with the uh, with uh, part five. Okay, what we did today is study about correlations. But what's most importantly, what we did is okay to come out with a model of regression, simple linear regression where we have x variable the independent to explain y variable the in, uh, the dependent variable which can be used for estimation. Okay, so I hope uh, you can go back and study these two concepts and do the exercise based on the textbook. Okay, and you can try okay both manual calculation using the different formula as well as using the data, okay, the software that is uh, available, okay, with the textbook and, you know, try the, the, the,